In this example, we're going to evade antivirus by obfuscating our Java code with a Metasploit. Uh, in this example, we're going to be using the IE Peers exploit, which came around in early 2010, and specifically targeted a flaw within Internet Explorer 6 and Internet Explorer 7. Uh, job, Metasploit does a good job of obfuscation when you're talking about the variables, button IDs, and things like that. However, it looks like the percent you encoding as well as the unescapes are getting detected by antivirus out there right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run the exploit against a vulnerable system. We're only going to use calculator.exe, calc.exe, um, as an example, proof of concept that it actually is working. So if you look here, we've set up Metasploit to basically execute calc.exe once it has triggered the overflow. Uh, we're going to be using it on port 80 and we're using the URI path of just the default of root. And then we're going to go ahead and target specifically IE6, service pack 0, and service pack 2. So if we go over to our victim machine and we browse to our specific address, we should get calculator calc.exe. All right, so we were able to trigger that overflow and specifically access calc.exe. So we know that it is vulnerable. Now let's see what happens when we actually go to this website. And we view the source. So if we actually look at this exploit, you can see that there are a lot of fields that are obfuscated. So we have a lot of button IDs that are obfuscated on clicks. Uh, different variable names and functions and everything seems to be pretty good. Uh, looking through it, it looks like the majority of the detection is actually occurring right here, uh, which is the percent new encoding, which is often used within JavaScript uh, in order to, you know, do heap sprays and get execution flow uh, with a specific shell code right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to obfuscate this code in a manner that doesn't get detected. Now let's actually save this real quick. We'll save it as localhost.htm. And let's browse the virus tool real quick and upload our localhost.htm and see if it gets detected by antivirus. So you can see here it's getting picked up by quite a few. Uh, there are a few out there like AVG, Dr. Web. Uh, that aren't picking these specific ones up, but the majority of main antivirus vendors out there right now are picking this specific attack up. So we have Kaspersky, McAfee, Microsoft's picking it up, Symantec's picking it up, Trend's picking it up. Uh, the majority of antivirus vendors right now are picking it up. So if you look at the tally, 23 out of 41 specifically picked it up. So that's a 56% clip um, of actual detection rates. So let's actually get around this real quick. So if we look at our code here, what we want to do is from the JavaScript tag down, right below it, is highlight all of our information until we hit the close brackets of the script. So from here to here, let's right click and hit copy. Okay. Then we can definitely do this manually. Um, it, it takes a little bit more work and it's typically how I go about it. However, this is a really easy way of obfuscating your code in a very fast manner. If you go to dean.edwards.name forward slash packer, you get an automatic packer for you. And what you want to do is hit the base64 encode and the shrink variable code. If I could click, there we go. And we're going to paste our code into here. And we're going to go ahead and hit pack. So you see here it spits out a bunch of obfuscated code for us. Let's go ahead and highlight this all and copy it. And in our exploit, let's get rid of all this stuff and add all of this in here. So you can see here this is quite a bit of, of, of a different looking type of exploit. Uh, let's save it. And we're going to go ahead and re, uh, rename this to index.html. 
Now we're going to load this in Python. Actually, let's close out of this real quick here. We'll set this on port 80. All right, so now we have a web server listening on port 80. And I just specified the dash M simple HTTP server. And what this does is it will basically allow anybody browsing to my specific directory to find whatever files they want to in there. And by default, if index.html is there, it will automatically go ahead and load that page. So let's go back to our victim browser. And let's try this again. As you can see here, the exploit is working functionally with the obfuscated code. So let's actually go back to VirusTotal. and upload our index.html. Looking much better. So far we only had two detected and the majority of antivirus vendors out there are not detecting it right now. So if you look at this you see Symantec, McAfee, uh, Sophos, um, all the different antivirus vendors out there are not detecting it. So that's a much better percentage ratio for me. Instead of 56%, it's now 4.88%. Enjoy.